All right, I'm B. I'm B. So this is our question, will be. Will be? Will you be in Scotland tomorrow? Oh, I wish. <laughs> will it rain tomorrow? Will it be rainy? Will it be hot tomorrow? Yeah, will you be working on Sunday? Hope not, <laughs> etc. So it's asking about the future. And one thing that I really liked when I was learning these different forms is the B is like the B and will be. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, leva. All right, so I'm um, B. Let's change up our sentence a bit. I'm B. I'm B. Shiv. A gopar. I'm B. Shiv. A gopar. Will be. You. Plural. Working. <laughs> Leva. Will you be working? Will you be working? Will you be working on Wednesday? It'd be nice to have lunch together sometime. Will you be working on Wednesday? That kind of thing. Yeah, gleva. So our question, um, B, and our simple way to say yes or no, our short way, like with ha or hanyel for this question, va or haro for this question, we're going to have like a nice short and sweet way to say yes or no. Here we go. Um, B, B, or chavi. Okay. So B, is our positive response, their way to say yes in response to this question. Um, B Shiva Gopar, B, B, B. Or if we want a longer answer, B, Sheen, a Gopar. We, we will be working. We will be working. We'll be at work. Yep. So, B, our positive response, um, B shiv agopar, B, mm -hmm. B, B, B she nagopar. So your long answer could be something like that. Leva. All right. So it's time to impress my socks off. <laughs> Make my socks fly across the yurt. I'm not wearing any, but it's a figure of speech. <laughs> time to impress me. And it's okay if it doesn't work out. That's fine too. <laughs> B is the yes response. Chavi is the it's the no response. It's negative. What's the little clue that it's negative? The same clue that was in Chaniel, Charo. What's our clue that this is no? That this is negative. Ha, Gleva. Gleva! Nice. Well done. Well done. So, here we are. So, as I mentioned before, B, it's kind of like will be. And in our answers, that B, that kind of sounds like will be, right? Javi. So, all of these with this future, it's really nice how they all really connect quite obviously. Yeah, down here, Eh, less obviously, you're talking about the past. <laughs> Although the pattern stands, Ro is always past. So, we're talking about the future here. And we want to mark out the bees as being future. There we go. So our clue we're talking about the future is B. 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 Chavi. Am B. There we go. Leva. Oh, so we need to put this down here. We need to fill out the rest of our, our examples here. Um, B Shiva Gopar, will you be working on Sunday? Pff, heck no. Javi. <laughs> bit, of, um, bit, of, bit of fire there. Javi. Javi. Na bi gorach. Javi, Javi. <laughs> Ooh, if we, if we want to add in a little bit more. Um, kind of emotion to it. Chavi <laughs> Ichir will not be at all. Ichir. Ichir Ichir. Chavi Ichir. Am B Shivagopar. B. 
Am bisha vagoper, chavi. Am bisha vagoper, chavi. Eacher. Not at all. Not on your life. <laughs> I need time off, which is really important. Really important. Especially when you're learning Gaelic. So much can be happening here. Taking a break to let it all kind of trickle down, sort itself out. That can actually make you learn better than just continuously cramming even more and more in. Yeah, take breaks. Please take breaks. Yeah. And I'm, in a way, I'm saying that to myself too. <laughs> take breaks in all realms of life. Okay, Maha. Gleva. So we've looked at yes and no responses to are, were, will be. We even got a little bonus here at all, adding a bit of fire to it, to a negative response. Oh, Javi <laughs> Ichir. Not at all. Were you tired and Rouski? Oh, Haro Ichir. Not at all. What do you take me for? Are you tired now of Veluski? Oh, Haniel Ichir. Not at all. I just had 27 Red Bulls, for example. Gleva. All right. Our pattern is getting reinforced more and more here. Now we've arrived at our fourth one. This one, it's taught. It's, it's taught, but it's perhaps the least frequent of all of these questions. Because this is talking about hypothetical things or things that you did regularly in the past. We, in, in any language, I find, well, okay, perhaps that's too broad a generalization. In English and other languages, including Gaelic, we talk about things that are happening now and in the past most often. And then number three in our list here of most frequent times that we talk about future, this one is at the bottom of the list. Yeah, we're still going to do it because it is important in Gaelic and it can bring your Gaelic up to the next level. And if you're intermediate, using this more often will bring your Gaelic closer to that of a native speaker. Big time. Okay. So, ambiag means would be. It's the question. Would be. Would be. Would you be tired after work? Would you be... What can we do? Would you be walking to the park every Saturday? You know, would you walk to the park every Saturday? Would you work seven days a week, that kind of thing. Hypothetical, you know, would you go to Scotland with me if I bought the tickets? Hypothetical, you know, it might happen, it might not, but it's kind of thinking about what if. And then also we can use this to talk about past habitual, it's called technically, things that happened often in the past. Would you walk to school every day? You know, did you walk to school every day? Would you work seven days a week? You know, did, did you work seven days a week? Yeah, talk about regular things. Okay, Leva. So let's, let's come right here to our question. Would be, what could we do here? Would you work? Would you work on Mondays, you know? Or maybe you have a nice long weekend every, every week? That'd be nice. Um, be a, ooh, let's see. Let's, let's talk about them, like a group of people or someone who finds... Uh, who prefers a, a non-binary identity? Great. Um, big it egoper jeluin. Would they work on Monday? Would they work on Monday? Would be they working Monday? <laughs> Would they be working Monday? Gallic, we jump around a bit when translating literally. Would they be working on Monday? Gleva, would they be working on Monday? So the way to say, let's see, we're running out of space up here. We can come down here. So we've got two ways to do it here. So we need our positive and negative, right? Our yes and no. So vieg, vieg is yes. Kachchuva ashoe, pion uanya, vieg. And then also, what could we do here? Javi would not be Javi. Javi, right? Gleva. So we've got our two patterns in mind here. This is negative because it has the X there, but why else? There's a little clue in the word, which is. 
it's this part, right? Chavieg, chavieg, mm-mm. Charo, right? Charo, mm-mm. Chavi, mm-mm. Chaniel, mm-mm. Yeah, so that's our clue, it's negative. Gleva. And then our clue that this is talking about hypotheticals or, or um, past habits. So we could say past um, or hypothetical. Past habitual or hypotheticals. If this word is new to you, hypothetical, welcome to hypothetical. It means like asking a question, what if this would happen? It may not happen, but it might. But you know, what if? What if we went to Scotland and I bought the tickets? What would you come to? That kind of idea. Okay. Leva. I'm big at the Gopa Jaluan. Bringing this up. Short response. Yep, they would. They're, they're crazy. They work on Monday. Ugh, crazy. Big. 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 So we notice this BH is a V sound, right? Big. We also had it with Javi. Avel. Yeah. And then Va as well. BH. It's the Gallic V sound because there's no letter V in Gallic. All right. I'm big. At a gopher jaluan, Javier. Javier, ooh, let's add in our eacher. Yeah, eacher. Eacher, 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 eacher. Eacher is a fun one. Adds a lot of life. Yeah, with just a short word. And as we looked at with these, you can respond with, you know, more, a longer yes or no. But just for just simplicity's sake, we can do the short ones. Am big at the Gopur Jaloin, Vig, Chavig, Chavig, each Chavig. Very nice. <clears throat> now, there's one small thing I want to share with you here. Actually, two, to be honest. <clears throat> so, this tense is kind of funky. Oh, one moment. We want to look at our clue here. What, what tells us that it is? It is this. It's really the big. Yeah, that that shows us it's this past habitual or hypothetical. Yeah, there we go. It's really this. Okay, <clears throat> just want to make sure everything's clear to you. Leva. So there are two kind of extra bits for this part here, and these are ones that trick up a lot of students. They trip them up so much, and if if you, you know, practice this and it becomes more natural for you, your Gallic is going to make a big step with just a tiny little tweak, a little change. So, if we want to talk about me, we would not say vig me. More modernly, some folk might, but it is so untraditional. It is so untraditional. It's so uncommon, in, in my experience, that really we, we should keep this traditional form clear in our heads here. We should really learn this. So, if we're talking about me, the form changes. Wien. Wien. Yeah. So, what this means is, I would. Would. I would. And this little ending, that's what means I, or me. It's a bit weird. Because normally in Gallic sentences we use what's called a pronoun, like them, or you, or you, or me, right? But we don't do that in this one st instance here, in this case. And it seems a bit weird. This is, a, from what I understand, this is a link with old, old, old Gallic. Old, old, old Gallic. This is a very Celtic thing in the, Cel uh, in, I mean, in the Celtic languages. This is a common feature of the Celtic languages. Very common thing to have your person you're, who's doing the action or kind of being talked about included in the verb. A lot of languages do these. A lot of them, a lot of them. I'm sure you could think of languages that do. They just change an ending to mean about me or you or him or her or them, all of those people. Yeah. 
And at one point, Scottish Gaelic was like that. This is a very Celtic thing. And if I remember correctly, Irish still has many structures that does this too. So Irish has held on to this really Celtic feature of, of these languages, these really Celtic thing, this Celtic pattern. But Scottish Gaelic changed. And what, as I understand it, this is because of the influence of Germanic languages like English and Old Norse. English and Old Norse have very different grammar from this kind of Old Celtic grammar. Very, very different. Old Celtic includes words like I or he within the word. Germanic languages keep them separate. Like we've been doing here. Me, u, shiv, it. Yeah. And just because Gaelic was really surrounded and immersed in these languages, the grammar for Scottish Gaelic shifted. It shifted so much that it became more Germanic. Yeah. I've heard this attributed mainly to the Norse. When the Vikings came over and stayed in Scotland, they changed the Scottish Gaelic language. As, as, as far as I remember, if memory serves, if memory serves, so a historical fact here, we're looking right here at like old, old Gaelic. Something that Irish still has within it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And it's just another thing for us to learn in Scottish Gaelic. Veen, veen. And then our, our negative response. Ooh, you've seen it four different times. What could we do? What do we do to make it I would not, make it negative? There's a little addition that we add in. Yeah, okay. Ha. Ha. Veen. Ha veen. I would not. Would not. That's the ha. The ha is the negative. Chavin. Veen. Veen egoper jaloin. I would work on Mondays. Like, kind of like I used to, or I, I did work on Mondays. Veen egoper jaloin. I would. I would not. Chavin. Chavin egoper jaloin. I would not work Mondays. Eachir. Chavin egoper jaloin. Eachir. Yeah. Very nice. So we're lucky that this follows the patterns for everything else. It's just the, the word that we're going to use for me, I would, is different. And it's this old, beautiful old form from old, old Gaelic. Very Celtic. Lovely. Gleva. So, vin, vin, chavin. There we are. Just like that. Vin and chavin. Kerstmaha. Right then. There's one more form I want to introduce you to. And it's very similar to our Wien here. Remember, Wien means it's me and then wir smushed together. So it means I would be or I would. And in response to this question, it's the way to say yes for yourself. Am big, am big to a go per jaloin. Wien, Wien a go per jaloin. I would be, I would be. Kleva. So, we have another form that does this kind of thing as well. So it's when it's us and then um, vieg. When those two get mushed together, they make their own form as well. So. Viemich. There's another spelling of it too. I, I believe it's something like this. Viemich. Or it'd be viemich. Something like this. I write this one. I, I go with this one personally. So, viamich. So there's an ending here, just like on this one, that means something specific. This mitch means us. We. Via mitch. Via mitch. We. Would. Be, we would, we would be, depending on context, we would. Viamich, viamich. 
So if this question is being directed at a group of people, um, big shiv agopar jaloin, would you work on Monday? As a whole, viamich, viamich agopar jaloin, viamich, the yes, viamich. It's us plus vig, yeah. And then viamich. And then, as expected, to make the negative, what do we do? put ha in front of it. Yeah. So we'll have this as, you know, alternate form. Ha viamich. We would not. We would not. Or we would not be, depending on whatever you're um, speaking about whatever the context is. Chaviyamich. So if it was asked, um, Biyag Shivagopa Jaluan, would you work on Monday? There we go. It's a little better. <laughs> um, Biyag Shivagopa Jaluan. Here, for full clarity. Shiv. This is what we're working with now. Um, Biyag Shivagopa Jaluan, would you all work on Monday? Viyamich. Chaviyamich, Chaviyamich, Cha. There we are. Gleva, Gleva. Nice job. So as we saw up here, this kind of bia or via, this signifies it's this tense. Same deal over here. Yeah. Gleva. All right. And there's something fun that happens with these endings with other verbs in other circumstances. I'll make a video all about that because it's really fun. It's a way to, you know, well, I don't want to give away the secret. <laughs> you'll just have to watch that video in the future, but it'll add a lot of life to your Gaelic. Yeah, and how, how you, you interact with others. Okay, Maha. So just to recap really quick here, there's no yes or no in Gaelic, unfortunately, but we would respond with kind of positive and negative forms. Are you tired? M or am not. Gleva. So if asking avel, this question, are, it's in the present, aveluski, are you tired? Aveluski, the yes is ha, the no is chanyel, the equivalence of them. Ro is a sign this is in the past. An rouski, va, va, yes, charo, no, the equivalence of yes and no. Am bi, this B is a sign that's in the future. Um, B Shivagopar, will you be working? B, B, B. Chavi, Chavi. And when we have a Cha in a verb, that means negative. Negative. A Cha in front of a part, I mean. Yeah, yep. Kleva. So if it's two separate parts and there's Cha in front of it, negative. And then this part here, this is used for things that happen often in the past, regularly in the past or hypotheticals, like thinking, what if, if I went to Scotland, you know, would you come with me? Um, Biyag iat the gopar, would they be working? Jaloin, um, biyag at the gopar, jaloin, viyag, chaviyag. We know the cha is a sign, this is negative. Leva, it's kind of at the beginning of this response. Chaviyag, ichir, ichir, leva. When talking about I would or I would not, or responding to this question from your perspective, from a me, with a me, then it would be veen, 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 chaveen. And for us, for we, it follows a similar pattern as this. This mitch ending shows that it's we, just like this een here showed it's I, it's me. So, um, biag shiv agopar jaloin, would you all work on Monday? Viamich agopa jaloin, viamich, 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 chaviamich, chaviamich. Kleva. Nice job. So here are some very useful and very common ways to respond, kind of yes or no, to these high frequency questions. Yeah, you'll see these a lot. Kleva. And as I mentioned before, um, there are other ways of answering questions, you know, tied to specific verbs. We'll look at those in a future video, and we'll also look at the fun you can have with adding this Mitch ending onto things. Yeah, leva, leva. 
before you go, one last tiny thing, because there aren't <laughs> there aren't enough tricks already in this video. One thing that I've I discovered after a few years of studying Gaelic, you know, when I was starting out, is that although there's no yes or no, which can be confusing, we actually get something that's better than yes or no. Once we learn these, we've already got our sentence starters for statements. So for example, um, B. B means yes, Chavi means no, great. But I could use a B to start a sentence in the future. Chavi, I can start a sentence in the future, a negative sentence, right? Something that's not happening. Just like that. Yeah. Kleva. So, Avel, Avel, Ha, Chaniel. But it's more than that. It's how to start a sentence, like a positive sentence. I am tired. Ha miski. Chaniel miski. So mastering these will help you in many different ways. Answering questions and beyond, too. Kleva. Thank you so much for sticking with me. There's a lot here, a lot we went over. Watch this video as many times as is useful to you. Review never hurts. Taking a break never hurts. Truly, do what's best for you and be kind to yourself. You know, it takes some time to rewire circuits in our mind, so to speak. It takes a long time. Yeah, and as quickly as we'd like it to happen, you know, we can't rush our biology. So do what you can. Do what you can. Keep on going with your Gaelic, and one day you'll be a bit surprised about where you are, <laughs> how far your Gaelic has come. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next video. Gleva. Chidi, chidi, chidi.